Hey guys, it's Lonnie. Today we're going to take a look at installing a brand new CodeIgniter 4 application uh, and getting it set up with CodeIgniter Shield, the official authentication package for um, CodeIgniter that is currently out in beta. All right. So the first thing we got to do, obviously, is to install CodeIgniter. So we're going to do that by using Composer and the Create Project command to do CodeIgniter 4 App Starter, and we're going to put that in this case in the Shield Play folder. Let it install. Great. So we'll come there. So now, if we come to our, our website here, um, I've used a few different variations on this in the past. There we go. We have a brand new Code Matter 4.2.1 installation. All right. So let's open the project here. Um, open folder. We're going to come down here. Shield play. All right, so the first thing we want to do is to copy and create our uh, new env file here. We want to make sure we are in development mode here because that will allow us to see our errors, uh, display the debug toolbar, stuff like that. All right, whenever you're in development, you obviously want to do like that. So we're going to do that, and we're going to change our base URL here to reflect what it actually is so that the debug bar will actually show up. Um, shield play.test. There we go. And the only other thing I need to do here is to set up my database. In which, for me, these settings work about right, except, yeah, that is what I have. All right, so in this case, if we go back here, it's all working, we have our debug toolbar. So that means it shows that we are in development mode. And I believe if we come down here, it'll tell us right here we are in development mode. So now we have a brand new code and installation set up. You're ready to rock and roll on a new application if you want. But if you need authentication, that's where you want to go just a little bit farther here. And we come here, whoops, come back here. And now we use Composer again, and we're going to require Shield. In this case, though, it is still in beta, and I want to pull down the very latest uh, branch uh, that's in development of our beta. Um, this is uh, after our first beta when this is being recorded and before our second beta. So let's just bring down the most recent developed branch of Shield. This way we don't have to worry about minimum stability, anything like that in our composer file. So at this point, we have Shield. Okay, if we come here and look at our vendors folder, we can see Code Editor 4 Shield. It has been installed for us. Does it do anything for us at that point? Well, in order to test that, it would show up right here. However, it's not quite ready for that. So to get us all set up, all we really have to do now is go ahead and um, run our setup command. Um, Yeah, in this case, it goes ahead and copies uh, our config files to from Shield to us. These are the two that we're going to use all the time. It copies the base controller over, which has some uh, features already set up, like making sure our helpers are loaded. Um, and then it can copies over the routes, which just makes sure that the routes are installed. And, and in this case, it just does all of the routes. If you need to customize though, those, we will go over that in a future video. Um, for now, it's asking, do you want to migrate the database? Um, in this case, we have not done this yet, so yes, we want to migrate. There you go. All the migrations have run. So we've got, if we come and look at our table here, we have our users table. We have a settings table. This is used by Coding Matter Settings, uh, which Shield uses, which allows you to use your config files that you know and love, um, but to also have those values overridden in the database should you need to do that, you know, especially like you're setting up a user interface for your client to be able to edit settings. Um, this makes that work pretty much out of the box for you. And if you need that kind of functionality in your own app, check out settings for sure. Uh, start using the setting helper instead of config helper and you'll be golden. All right. So obviously our migrations because that's with all uh, code editor uh, applications. And then we have what, six different tables here to handle um, all of our authentication aspects, all right? So that is all set up for you now. And now if we come back here, login, we get our login page. You'll see there is actually an auth uh, pane in the um, bar. 
if you oops if you go to register registration will work uh, obviously you can go back to login uh, if you forgot your password and do have a registered account, you can use what's called a login link, or we call them the magic login links. Uh, basically, it sends an email to the user with a uh, code or with a link that gets them back into the system for you. Very simple, very clean. Um, at that point, if you're making your own app, you might want to ask them to reset their password, or they can use the magic login link next time, too. Either way, it works. If you're really inventive, you could probably set that up to always use passwordless login using the magic login links. Uh, but we're not going to talk about that anytime soon. So that is it. That's all it takes to get a Code Igniter application up and running with some very sophisticated authentication. Now, the authentication, just to kind of give a very quick overview, it comes with two different types of authentication for you. You've got your normal, obviously, email or username and password based authentication system that we all know and love, <laughs> maybe the wrong word there, uh, but that we're all used to. Um, I know we're, things are starting to move towards passwordless logins and Shield will evolve over time to help support that also. Uh, but for now it supports this type, the standard username, or we call it session based because it stores it in the session, right? With a uh, pretty secure, as secure as we can make it, remember me functionality, uh, which is more secure than several of the ones I've seen in the past. Um, so we've got that going for you. We've got filters, all the stuff you're used to, right? Now we've also got a personal access token. If, if you've ever used GitHub before, and probably a number of other people, you may have seen their personal access tokens where you set it up. It gives you a very long key. Uh, these are usually last for a year is what Shield defaults it to, how, how long it's valid for after. Uh, a year of unuse, basically, a year since the last time the person was logged in using that personal access token. Uh, you can use those with mobile applications. Um, is, a, is a nice application for it. They log in via normal, you give them a personal access token, it's saved up in your mobile app, and then you can use that forever. Uh, not forever, obviously, but for a very, very long time. Uh, you might want to you know, develop some way for them to man a UI for the users to manage that. But so those are the two main types of um, authentication that we've got going. Now, as far as authorization goes, it is all a role-based um, access control. And if I remember right, it comes very close to meeting NIST level two, I think it is. Uh, it's been a couple of years since so I've looked at that, but NIST level two uh, role-based access control where permissions are signed at the role level, or in this case, the group level. And in Shield, you can have multiple groups per user. So you can use it as a standard role, quote unquote, um, where it's super admin, admin, moderator, user, you know, whatever your needs are for your website. So you can use it in that fashion. But you can also do it to combine things like, um, well, if you've got forums, say you, you've got a bunch of moderators also, right? So they may be moderators and super admin or end uh, users. Um, you may have beta features that are available on your website. Right, and so let's go take a look at this. Just a real quick glance here. If we come to our config, we've got our, our auth config, which has, it, it's quite the, the large file here, um, but it includes things like being able to customize your views here. You just tell it what view you want it to use, and if your needs match the out-of-the-box functionality, you can just use different views here to customize it to your website, change the view here, and you're good to go. You don't have to do any um, overrides of controllers or anything like that. You can change where it redirects to. And speaking of redirects, one thing to be to be very um, aware of is that you can override redirects down here. You got a login redirect command that's always called to figure out where the user should be redirected to. At this point, you could use the auth helper. Let's say, um, so we could do like auth user. Um, in group admin, and if they are, then we wanted to redirect them to slash admin, right? Otherwise, we wanted to redirect them to whatever is stored. This uses the settings that I was telling you about. So whatever is stored in the auth config file redirects, which if, whoops, which is up here. So we're we're in the file, so we, um, which is up here, and so it would pull that, right? 
So you can, you can use these functions to customize where redirects are sent to if you need additional customization. And I have a feeling a lot of people will need that. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of at the moment at the bottom of the file. Maybe that'll change in the future, but I wanted to make sure you guys are aware of that. So there's all kinds of options here in the auth. Uh, you can set up, like I said, these are the two. If you want to write custom ones that utilize the functionality that we've already built, you can have a new one come in here. Maybe we'll have other authenticators in the future. I, I don't know. Maybe third-party ones can add stuff like JWT, OAuth, um, social, different social authentication, stuff like that. That'd be awesome to see. Um, you can customize the headers, how long they're, they're valid for. Uh, you can turn off registration. Uh, you, there's also a place in here where you can turn off remember me functionality. Uh, both of these are on by default. Um, by default, we also record the last active date of a user. So every time, every page view, it records that time of day. It just basically does a touch on that user command or that user record. Um, if you really need that performance and don't care about knowing when they were last active, you can turn that off right there. Uh, you can turn off the magic login links if you want. Don't want if you want to handle uh, password resets your own way. So all kinds of options to configure in here, right? So make sure you look through here as as part of your getting familiar stages, because uh, there's all kinds of stuff you're going to be here. The second file is the auth groups file here, and this is different than a lot of uh, authentication systems do. All right, one of the goals that I had when creating Shield originally. I kind of did it, got a real quick start on it over uh, a Christmas vacation, actually, uh, and then evolved it over the next year and, and fleshed it out. Um, but one of the goals was to be able to um, use what the code that is in the Git repo to save this to you know version control and to have that as the initial state of the application. Right, so instead of having to do a um, a database seed that you have to always keep up to date, here we can we can use this and we can define. Hey, these are um, the groups that are available, the roles per se, or or the groups that are available uh, with a title and description, so that you can use that in the UI. Right, so these are how I want my app to set up. Now, yes, I could very easily make a user interface um, where the user could in the future create new roles and assign permissions to them, right? But by default, I want it to come out of the box like this, and I want it to be easy to configure. And so that was kind of the, one of the goals with Shield, which is why you'll see it with a configuration file like this. It looks a little different. But it, remember, it allows you to put everything in version control and have it tested out of the box that it matches correctly. Uh, and then down here, you'll define your permissions. Permissions are created with a, what we call context here, which is just basically a group, like admin features, user features, beta features, stuff like that. And then the more specific, whether it's for accessing the admin or viewing the settings page for the admins, uh, or if you're in the users page, whether you can manage other admins, you know, so that's how permissions are set up here. It's just a string, it can be anything you want. That's how we do it though with context and then the, the permission itself, or the more specific aspect of the permission, I guess. Um, and then finally, we have the matrix, which shows for each group what permissions they get. Uh, you can do wildcard for each context. In this case, like all of the admin features the super admin gets, all the user features, all the beta features. You can do that for any of these groups, right? So this is just what comes out of the box. Very easy to configure. Save it to your version control. You're good to go. All right. And that's the broad overview well, except for the, um, oops, the helper, which didn't get copied over. I'm not going to go over that now. We'll go over that in a future video. Um, but this should get to be enough to get started. You've got it installed. You know where to look for the settings. And don't forget to look uh, in the docs file, especially in the new one. Uh, this doesn't have a, a pull request that's going in right now, but we've got a quick start document that's getting, being fine-tuned and getting ready to be uh, committed to the system. The, tells you all or most of the important things you need to know right out of the box to get comfortable using shield right uh, but one thing you're definitely want to look at is this concepts folder because we do some things that uh, google recommends by keeping identity separate from the user account which creates a little more complexity unfortunately but we've tried to take the, the sting out of that and make it as easy to work with your normal email and password uh, which is technically a separate identity stored in a different place. Um, but we've tried to make it as easy as possible and as seamless as possible to deal with that particular one. 
and, and to work with other identities if you see the, uh, the need for it. Uh, so definitely go over this concepts folder to understand, or concepts document to understand what is going on here. Um, read up on the authentication, authorization, auth actions or things like a two-factor authorization, uh, email-based account activation, stuff like that. Uh, here's for testing, how you can use it, use the library during testing, um, what events are fired off, and how to customize. All right. The docs will get better and they'll continue to grow. Keep an eye out. Um, but I hope this gets you guys started. Uh, and we will start tweaking this and, and customizing some of the features of this in the next video. All right? All right, guys. Have a great day, and I will see you later. Bye.